Good evening and welcome everybody to another edition of the Music and Mixing Show. I'm your host, DJ Michael Joseph. Each week, well actually not during the summer, it's not every week during the summer, we're doing it twice a month during the summer, but each time we get together, it's talking about the stuff that's relevant to the mix DJ and stuff like that. But this summer, I decided to do an entire summer of software. So it's all about software. And we're back again this week with another night about virtual DJ. And I'm probably going to say this about three or four times. Tonight's virtual DJ. The 28th, we are going to have a night on Serato. DJ Superfly is joining us. Uh, in August, uh, DJ Strobe is joining us to do uh, a night of Tractor. And then we are also going to do a night of uh, that software that begins with an M. And we actually are. So I always take a few minutes at the top of the hour to see who's in the chat. Say hello to everybody. Let them get in, and then I have a few things to show you that are new for Virtual DJ, and then I'll take you guys' questions. So, Rez was the first one in. DJ Rez was the first one in the chat today, so welcome, Rez. Thank you for being first. Uh, DJ Matt, what's going on? Uh, Matt's from Youngstown, Ohio, just left of me, I think. Todd is steep. What's going on? How are you? Um... Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, I think we're everywhere tonight. Um, give me 10 seconds here. I can tell you where we're all at tonight. We're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and like five YouTubes. And we should actually be live on my channel right now, believe it or not. Uh, uh, my regular Disc Jockey News. I mean, I'm sorry, my regular YouTube Facebook. So if you're watching on my Facebook group, hello. Uh, you can uh, a a ask questions at the bottom, and I'll be able to answer them tonight. Is about Virtual DJ. Um, John Colley, what's going on? Welcome. How are you? Um, there are some uh, two, two new things. If you've not seen my Virtual DJ, my VDJ How To. Uh, uh, videos. They're shorter, three-minute-long videos about different things in, the, you know, whether it be my favorite um, adjustments or tweaks within Virtual DJ or new stuff. Uh, I did a one a while back that had two of the things I'm going to talk about tonight because I think they're kind of neat. Um, Eric, what's going on, DJ Eric? Hello, welcome. Glad everybody could join us tonight. Um, it's summertime, so maybe y'all are out doing something fun. I don't know. I'm enjoying my summer, and that's why I'm only doing two shows a month because I really am enjoying. Um, getting out you know yesterday I was on a big long hike and stuff like that uh matt says about northwest uh are you northwest yes you're northwest of me that is correct <laughs> i don't even know where i'm at half the time so wait until everybody get in there tony what's going on welcome thank you everybody for joining in tonight it's gonna be a good night we have virtual dj questions tonight and again, I want to remind you that this is the summer of software. So we have Serato people coming later in the month, next month, Tractor, and the software that begins with an M. We're not allowed to say it because I don't even have anything to drink tonight. <laughs> it's been one of those days. Um, got some cool questions that people have asked me offline that I'm going to answer tonight. Some things that I think you guys are going to kind of be interested about. I hope you do. Um, Uh, Eric, please define that, and I will add that to the questions for tonight, but I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. So give me a second here to get... What does that mean? Hold on here. I'm copying that over to the sheet of questions. Whoops. Forgot what I was pasting there. But yeah, kind of define what you mean by that, adjusting that without the mixer because it's all everything's digital now so hit me up with that uh, for those of you just tuning tuning in thank you so much for joining us uh, this is music and mixing show tonight is about virtual DJ I have some stuff I'm going to talk about I'm going to answer some questions um, and again for everybody who's joining uh, this is the summer of software and I'm going to cover uh, I have somebody coming in uh, the 28th to talk about Serato and then next month we're having uh, tractor and the software that begins with an M so we don't have a whole lot of people tuned in tonight, so I hope wherever you're at, you're enjoying summer, and you can watch this on demand, because it is on demand, and all the shows stay up afterwards for as long as you want, and you can check them out. So I think we're about here. Um, I don't want to hold it up too long, but you guys, as we go along, just feel free to drop your questions, even if you're watching on Facebook or anything like that, because Eric's watching, DJ Eric's watching on Facebook, and uh, uh, I can see your questions there. Uh, wherever you're watching at, uh, it's, you know, drop your questions in. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about first two of the things that were, came in uh, the last Virtual DJ, VDJ How-To is the other series of videos I do. They're short little 
uh, three minute or less videos about stuff. And my last one, VD, it's VDJ how and then the number two it's all one word if you go to disc jockey news youtube page uh, i think i'm up to i don't know a lot uh this is the 98th version of this one and i have like 200 versions of another one stuff like that so there's a lot of shows and the two first things i'm going to talk about tonight are um things that i did on that video but i want to talk about them because i think they're kind of neat so let me switch over here and we're going to go to the left screen Actually, we're going to go left screen, zoomed in. All right. So as you see right here, uh, these two folders now have color to them. And it's something that they uh, just recently brought near uh, uh, to, to the standard access. Uh, it was in the early access for a while, and then it finally came out to the standard access. But if you want to highlight any folders like this, I have several of them highlighted. They're my favorites. This is actually a playlist. This this is a um, it's a favorited folder and this is a another you know, solid you know regular folder underneath of that and to change the colors of those all you have to do is right click on them and then go down to properties I'm hiding it with my picture here hold on Boop. Uh, right click on it and go down to properties and then you get this little pop up right here and then you just pick the color you want and you can even pick different shades of it so that's green and I can have that any shade I want or if it's if I want it red it can be red you can see it changing on the left there purple. Whatever you want it to be, you can change it into, you know, little other colors there. And uh, that that's that. I like that because, like I said, I, I spend most of my time in these three folders. This is the Billboard Top 40 from last week. I've not updated it recently. Um, so if you see songs in here that when I click on that, uh, there's nothing in there because I haven't updated. That's why. Um, but that one, the main folder that has everything in it because I'm hitting it to, to uh, as you can see, it's got the auto recurse on it so I can do searches here. And then um, make sure the volume's down in case I play anything. And then this one here is the 2021 uh, stuff I've downloaded for each month. So that I can, I just kind of, it's just my way of highlighting stuff. And I kind of thought it was neat. Um, Jimmy Spin's in the house. What's going on, Jimmy Spin? Hope you're doing well. Um, uh, Jimmy, um, take a breath. That's all I got to say is take a breath. Uh, but we are doing, I don't, you came in late. We are doing a Serato on the 28th. I have a friend uh, coming in and going to answer Serato questions on the 28th. So please tune in on that um, for that one because I know Jimmy uses Serato. And a lot of people do. A lot of people go back and forth because that's one of the things that surprised me. How many DJs use different software for different things? So that's kind of cool. But like I said, I wanted this summer to be a little different. I wanted guests on. I wanted it to be kind of casual, and that's what I kind of did. The Virtual DJs always has really high numbers. That's why I do one each month uh, of this. So the other thing we're going to look at is if I can get this in here right. All right, so um, this is a play playlist, okay? So it's something that it, actually there's no playlist there. Um, so we're going to go here. This is a playlist, okay? And they are, uh, uh, it's, I put them in an order originally. And of course, you can sort by artist, by play count, by BPM, or whatever you want to do. But if you want to go back to the, to the original order that the songs were in, with Virtual, you've always been able to do this, but they made it kind of easier um, recently. Um, so you right click, this is what you always had to do before, and reset sort order. And that would put them back into the order that you originally did them. But Virtual just added a thing to it to where you can go over here and then hit order. And this will add an order column to your columns. And then as you see, we have the orders. Let me slide this over so you can see that. Now we have our order columns here. So if you wanted to sort by artists and then you go, oh, I want to go back to it, you can either right click and then reset sort order, or you can just go over to your order column and hit that and it will sort it for you. And those are the two things that they've added recently that I think a lot of people would like. And uh, I, you know, I'm a play count person because I do I do that ridiculously long virtual um, uh, string searches that I do with all that kind of stuff. But that's two of the things they've added recently that I thought were kind of cool, and I thought you guys might like it. Um, glad everybody joined in tonight. Hello, Robin. Hope you're doing well. Um, all right, so we're gonna get to the questions. Um, first one that asked the question was it wasn't Matt. No, it was uh, Eric. Um, Eric says, I use two laptops with one virtual DJ. Two laptops, one with virtual DJ and another not. The EQ are totally different. Virtual DJ is way more tinny.
I'm not sure what you're asking there. So are you saying that one of your laptops is not using Virtual DJ, you're just playing songs off of it? Is that what you mean by that? I'm not quite sure. Uh, hit me up and let me know if that's it. Like I said, I also have some questions here. Uh, a lot of people submitted questions offline, so I have some of those there. Um, so I'm, I'm going to wait for uh, Eric to get back to me on that. Uh... Rez says virtuals is uh, is his backup record is his main. Uh, I hope you join. If you didn't, if you missed last month's la la the last music and mixing show, we had um, DJ Pauls from Pioneer came in and answered all kinds of questions about uh, a record box. So if you've not seen that, you can go back and watch that video. It is on demand. Um, I'm waiting for Eric to to kind of get back to me on that. Clarify that question. Todd asked, uh, "Could you show the code needed to assign a button on a 7000 to use?" The stem function to cut the vocals on and off. It's already there, uh, Todd. All you have to do is let me go over here and show left screen. Um, so if you want this right now, so I'm going to load a song here. Um, I think I have cue points on this. I'm not sure. All right. So right now this is set to hot cues. Okay. So these are all hot cues for the song. Um, all you have to do is... Go down to, um, what's it called? Stems. Where's my stems at? Stems is right there. So now this is your stems. So basically on your controller, the 7000, if you switch this over, whether it be um, manually or physically, this now becomes your, your, your hotcue pads become that. So if you set up in the... Uh, 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 Hot cues. So if you go over here and you see you have your drop down, there's one here called edit. Okay. So this is all your different pad modes that you have. Okay. Let me zoom in on that so you can see that. Move that down. So these are all your pad modes that you have. And uh, I I have one in there to where uh, uh, it, it is this, you know, the stems are already there. So what I did was I went into the, and I probably can't show it here because of, um, the way this works in the mapping. Let me see if it shows all. Um, I don't know if it's going to show it here without the 7000 plugged into it. That's a tough thing to do. MC7000. All right, so it is here. So the, the buttons that, that go across above your, your pad modes, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, set it to different things. And one of them is called, oh crap, I can't remember what they're called. Is it pad seven? I can't remember what it's called, but it's the buttons that cue there. Is it deck one? No. If I had the thing plugged in there, I could just press it. Um, pads, nope, I can't remember what they are. Is it roll, effects? Anyways, what you're doing is trying to find the buttons, you know, because you have your eight buttons across the top that set it, whether it's going to be hot cues, whether it's going to be effects, rolls, stuff like that. Uh, pick which one of those you want. I put mine always one, with, which is the sample, and then put in, uh, uh, for what it is, is I put in uh, the code to have it be pad. So if I can find out which one of those is, um, I can't remember what it's called. It's not parameters it's again if I just could press the button um, I apologize for not remembering what that's called um, give me a minute and I'll figure that out but we'll go back to questions but that's basically what you're doing is you're fine like if you were if you had the, if I had the 7000 plugged in and I pressed the, the button that I'm talking about it would put it right there and then that would show me what my different things are and I cannot remember uh, what it's called but that Todd I can talk to you offline about that because I can't really um, I can't remember what that but what they're called because they have different names for them um, and, and basically that's where you put that code and I could show you that code, but I can't find that right now. So we're going to skip that. I, 
you, you caught me off guard because I don't have the 7000 plugged in. So I can't, like I said, I can't remember what that button is called. But there's buttons on there for hot cue and all that. Find out what that one is. And when you press it, that's where you put the code in that it picks the pad mode for stems. So all you, and it should be stock. It should be the last one where you hit um, sampler once. And the second time you hit sampler, the stems should be underneath of that. Or some of them stems are first and you hit the button a second time and then you get the sampler. So it all depends on how it's MIDI mapped. Uh, but, but from stock, the stems go into pad mode from the furthest right button that chooses your pad modes. I hope that helps. All right, so that one kind of, <laughs> I apologize. Um, we got to get back to Eric uh, talking about his two laptops there. Um, going here correct second laptop is a different see here here's the thing you're talking about different software eric was asking you about them sounding differently um it's tough for me to set you up when you have two different programs going in uh, and i'm hoping you mean that they're going into the same controller or are you putting sound out of the laptops into a mixer because th that's two different worlds uh controlling it via the controller and controlling it via outs on the audio of the laptop to a mixer. So clarify, again, I run mine that just go a controller, plug it in, sound comes out of that, everything comes from that. I do the auto gain and remember, so I never never have to touch the gain, never have to adjust anything and I'm good. Um, yeah, DJ Ray said it's cooler when it's plugged in. Uh, that, Like I said, I could just press the button and tell you which button that is, but I don't remember uh, uh, what they're actually called, the pad mode uh, uh, things. That That's what's thrown me off so much on that, so. Uh, keep throwing the questions out at me. I do have some other ones that I'm going to come back to. And if you, at the end, I'll try to find that. Um, uh, someone, this is a good question that someone asked me uh, uh, offline. I'm going to go back to the other here so you can see me full screen. But his other question was pretty simple. Um, whoops. There we go. Move that over. He said, uh, I got a quick question. I started analyzing my drive, but accidentally clicked on the stems. Can I stop it or do I have to let it go till it's done? So those of you who don't know, uh, you can set up Virtual DJ to scan the stems ahead of time, scan them manually or, or you know, scan, scan them as you load them, scan them as you load them and remember them, pre-scan them and remember them, all that kind of stuff like that. Um, but he accidentally, in the process of just scanning the files, accidentally started having every single song scan for the stems and the simplest way to stop that no joke because i accidentally did it before this where i had it started scanning something is you just click x out of the program open it back up and it'll, it'll be right there it will not start scanning again and you're not going to hurt a darn thing that way so that's something a lot of people um uh a lot of people kind of you know do that with is is that they scan them ahead of time and not, but you just got to shut it off back on. That's all you have to do. All right, so we're going to get back into the things here. Uh, people asking questions on there. Um, Red says he has two sound cards on his DS, DSP-1000. I'm not sure what that is. Again, what you're, Rez, what you're doing there, if you are running... Again, I'm asking if you have them going in to the USB line ends of a controller or mixer, or are they uh, audio lines? Like, um, is it an audio line like that going in, or are you USBing into that mixer? Um, because that's a whole different thing there. DDJ 1000. So you're doing two computers in the same DDJ 1000 two different audio cards and one is hotter than the other you're saying um, that could be the, the computer itself because I have run a friend of mine running Mac and Serato and me running virtual and Windows on my 7000 and they both sounded exactly the same so I would guess is that one of those computers is set up differently so it's going in because it's the sound card is going to be the sound card it's going to be the sound card so if you have high lows and mids and everything set on the controller on the 1000 and you plug a computer in there and it sounds different than this computer it's it's the computer 
So you've got to adjust something in that computer the way it's feeding down, going into the audio settings, and it's going to be different. So keep that in mind. So if I go here and open that up into my audio section, let me move me out of the way here. Hold on. Move me out of the way a little bit there. So if you go into the audio section, you're going to be picking things. So as they come up, they're going to be coming in, whether you're going to be USB sound or computer audio or both. It all depends. You can have one computer set up to be running with the USB uh, uh, code. Uh, uh, um, what are they called? A ASIOs or the Wasabi. It's one of the, I call these Wasabi. It's Windows Audio Sound and something, something. It, that's what that stands for. But um, I have found with virtual, uh, with this, if you're running 2021, it is a 64-bit program, and I've found that the 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 uh, ASIO drivers on a on at least on a Windows computer are terrible for 2021 because it is a 64-bit program that it has a lot of it gets really hot. So all I did was switched over to the Wasabi, and I, it eliminated all my problems completely. So. I hope that helps. Again, it's it's not virtual. I'm guessing it's something to do with the computer itself. Um, John just talked in about the Wasabi things. Um, uh, well, Virtual DJ, I mean, there's a thousand settings in there for gain. There's an internal gain. There's a thing that gives you uh, headroom in there. So if I go here into options and type in gain, um, uh, you can do the auto gain, and remember, and that's per song. And there is also uh, the, the headphone. Uh, where's the other one at? It's the gain. What is it called? It gives you it gives you headroom. Um, is it audio? Um, metronome volume fader curve. I'm trying to remember what it's called. But what it does is it gives you a headroom in the program before it ever gets out. So if it's hot, you can pop in a little bit of headroom in there. And I can't remember. Um, equalize headphones. Uh, it's a number. What is it called? There it is. Zero dB. And zero dB, uh, if, if it's hotter, you can go in there and negative. See the drop down? And you can hit that. And it will take the whole program sound down a couple decibels, one, three, six, etc., and that will give you flat out more headroom before you move any physical knobs whatsoever. Um, so that's something to keep in mind there. And that, and that again is zero dB. I have mine set at default because I run them just plain and flat, and I also run the auto auto gain and remember. Um, but if it is I would first try the Wasabi drivers, and if that's not it, go in and give yourself under zero dB, give yourself a little bit of headroom in there by knocking down the decibels a bit. So I hope that helped. Um, back to here. Um, that's that's a weird, the, the audio stuff, like I said, when I switched to the 64-bit 2021, I, I, it was an adjustment uh, because it just didn't, uh, the, 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 one of the reasons why the, uh, Windows came out with that Wadi, Windows audio sound in something, whatever it stands for, um, is because that the old ASIO drivers were were just not uh, covered anymore. Uh, they did they weren't fixing them to meet newer programs, and that was clearly you know uh, what happened when it came to this, and it it just did not work well. Um, so let me go back into and again, I think Serato has adjustments like that. I don't know. Uh, it could be just Serato just is not running as hot. Virtual could be good, and it's not as hot. Uh, I would say, again, look at what, what's running. If you're running two different drivers, running an ASIO in one and the other on the other, I don't know. Um, but it's just something you're, you're not... It's going to be almost impossible to get both of them to be exactly the same. It's like back in the days on one of the motorcycles that I used to own, it came with what's called a twin carburetor, and that means two carburetors for two cylinders that are connected. And I wanted to up the uh, millimeter of the carburetor to get more power out of it, and I ended up putting up two single carburetors on there. And the idea to get both of those carburetors matched to where they were making each piston fire equally, that's kind of what you're doing with this, is you're expecting both of them to match, but you're using two different programs. It's like using two different carburetors. It's tough to get both of those pistons to match to hit. I hope that was a good explanation. I don't even know if you're into vehicles or anything like that. Um, keep throwing questions. Am I, did I miss any questions in the thing there? Um, 
Uh, seeing other questions. If I missed your question, shout it out again. I'm going to go over to the questions that were submitted. Um, Reggie, what's going on? Welcome. All right, here. This is a good one. I like this when, the, when this guy asked this one. Um, Kenny Z Zale, Z-A-I-L, asked this question. Um, he said, I'm doing a pool party for 55 and up community. They want me to do some fun games. I need to use the auto mix. Uh, after I load it, I want to make sure that I did not put any duplicates in there. And uh, so I can click on my auto mix. Um, after I uh, click on the titles, it, to, you know, to clean it up. Now I wonder, is there a way to randomize the songs? And there is yes to both of those. So if you are running auto mix, so let me go back and go zoom in and look at your auto mix over here and we'll move me back over here and if I'm looking at the auto mix here there is a little thing right here and there's a couple things that you can do with this um, clicking on it you can do uh, remove already played and that checks it so that if you've already played a song it will remove it or remove it as it's played remove duplicates takes out if you've thrown the same song in that list twice before you do anything um, you can remove just by one click doing remove duplicates. And if you want to play the auto mix to go into a random order, um, go to shuffle. And just as simple as that. Uh, like I said, that was a good one. I don't use auto mix at all, um, but a lot of people use it for exactly what he did, where he is he's needed to get out in the crowd at that pool party and interact with the crowd. And he kind of wants the computer to do its own thing without him being there. But that and that's a great way through virtual that gives you that option if you want to do that. So uh, we have lots of people watching tonight. We are on eight different places tonight. Uh, while I have everybody here, I want to remind you that this is the summer of software. We're doing all software shows this summer. Uh, that we're doing virtual tonight, obviously. On the 28th, DJ Superfly is joining us to answer all your Serato DJ Pro questions. He might even answer some Serato Light questions. Um, but he's going to be here that night uh, to talk about Serato and answer all your questions and stuff like that. In August, I have another friend of mine, DJ Strobe, who's coming on to talk about Tractor and all the stuff to do with Tractor and answer your Tractor questions. And we are, yes, in August, doing a show on the program that begins with an M that we can't say its name. If someone wants to type it into the chat, you can, but it, we can't say the name. I don't even have anything to drink tonight, so if I say it, I can't even do anything about it. So there we go. I, I didn't realize that I wasn't on big screen there. Um, uh, Todd, to, sorry, Tony Lackey asked the question, is there a way to remove every song in the side list or auto mix without having to remove the songs one by one. Yeah, you just you highlight them all. So we're going to go here. And if I want to remove all of these, so I just pick the top one. Scroll down to the bottom. Uh, for me, it's hold shift. I hold the shift button down and then hit that, and it highlights all of them. Uh, you can do part of them. On a, a Windows computer, you can do control. And control lets you do individuals. So I can skip ones here and do this and this and this and this and this. Skip a couple, do that and that, and then right-click, remove. Or again, you want to highlight all of them, highlight, um, go down, shift there, and remove. And that's all you have to do. Back to here, good question. Um, if anybody else has any questions, shout it out. I'm gonna go back to the list again because there were some good questions on here. Um, Oh, this is a good one. I don't even know if I answered this one last week. Um, DJ Mikey Mike on Virtual DJ Q&A commented, I have a quick question. I have external drive, backup drives uh, mapped to my system, and they keep showing up when I do a search for music on the drives I use for DJing. Um, I did uh, check ignore drive backup, but it kept finding it. <clears throat> one of the things you have to do, no, correct, Reggie, no Winamp. That one of the things you have to do is that you have to have the hard drive plugged in. And if I go back to here, hold on. Got way too many things open. Um, we're gonna go back here. And if you go into your drives here, um, it, if you plug one in and it does a search, it's gonna show up in um, your local music as a drive, okay? So like this computer has a couple different drives and it's gonna show up in there. Um, if you unplug it, it's still gonna sit there and it's gonna keep that it's going to keep those songs in the database. But if you want it to where it doesn't show up, what you have to do is make sure it's plugged in first. Make sure it's plugged in, then right click and, um, uh, uh, where's it called? Remove, um, 
Where is it called? Where's the ignore at? Oh, that's a C drive. That's probably why it's not going to find it in the C drive. Um, holy crap, I can't make it ignore. This is second time tonight you guys have caught me with something. But there should be thing there that says ignore drive. And I'm not sure why it's not letting me ignore drive. Maybe I can ignore a folder. Uh, DJ Music is right there. Batch. Remove from search database. So that's what you would hit. Um, I'm going to move my picture so you can see me and see that. Whoops. Come on. So remove from search database. That's what you would hit. It, But you have to make sure that the drive is plugged in when you do that. Then it will ignore it from then on out. And once you do that, then then unplug the drive and go on with your business. Oh, gosh. it's 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 been one of those summers I have been busy. I've actually been DJing a lot. All the places I'm DJing now, I did not DJ before the, the lockdown. All the places that I DJed before the lockdown have either not brought DJs back yet or decide they're not going to bring DJs back. So uh, one of them might come back in the fall when school comes in. I don't know, but it's it's been weird. Um, so there we go. Um, Eric says he already answered his, his own question. I can seem to add new virtual DJ. Sorry for those updates. You used to be able to right click under existing folders and add virtual folders. Uh, you can add, you're, t you're talking about adding new virtual folders because you can add new virtual folders. Um, you can hierarchy them and everything if that's what you're asking. Um, is, there a, is there a bit rate that a song is transferred? I'm not sure what that question means. Is there a bit rate that a song is transferred? Uh, please, please, sorry, just <laughs> spit on my, um, uh, please clarify that, Reggie, what you're, what you're doing there. Um, if you have any more questions, again, we're on like uh, eight different places tonight. Uh, Facebook, uh, several Facebooks, several YouTubes, Twitch, all of that. And I'm here to answer your Virtual DJ questions tonight. And again, uh, this is the summer of software, and I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, hello, Ace. What's going on? Uh, oh, Eric wants to see how you do that. Okay, so if I'm going here and I'm gonna shut down my drive, shut up that, um, this is a favorite folder okay so favorite folder has the heart on it and this looks a little different than if I use the stock one um, but if I click on that I don't know if there's anything in there or not um, but you have to click on it and then you add a favorite folder up here do what you want to do I'm going to rename this one um, rename to fake and then you can then take this and put it in. I think you just drag and drop it into the hierarchy of it. Maybe you can't. Um, no? No, right there it is. It's in the, it's in the right click. Right click, create subfolder. And we hit OK. And now we have a subfolder under a favorite. So that was, it was the way I thought it was supposed to be. Um, and there's a subfolder. It's supposed to be a subfolder underneath there. It's not showing up. Ah, oh, we broke it, man. We broke it. Ha <laughs> ha! I did. I think I broke it. Um, but that's what you're supposed to do about create a subfolder. One. Hit OK. Well, golly, I'm going to restart that. I don't know why that's doing that. But that's what you do. You start it again. See if they're there. Uh, create subfolder. Hit OK. You are correct. There is something going on with that because I'm trying to do that create subfolder. Because uh, you saw it was there with the right click. Um, it just it won't let me open it. It's there. That's interesting. I have to look into that. Reggie, uh, you said that you have to see the bit rates like 120. What do you mean you need to see them? See, again, you're not answering your question because is there a bit rate 
that a song is transferred. A song is transferred at whatever bit rate it was made at. So whatever it's at, it's always going to be. Um, you can never upgrade a bit rate, but you can degrade a bit rate. Um, 128 is not a very high bit rate. Um, I have songs in mind that are that I play regularly, but it's still not a very high bit rate. But uh, please answer the question, uh, ask the question in a little bit more detailed, what you're trying to figure out. Um, again, the guy was asking about the folder thing. It's freaking me out why it won't it won't do that. It, it's showing me in the hierarchy there uh, that um, that there is you know the drop down. Like see, I do a drop down there, and you get it, and there should be a drop down there, and it won't do that. So. Um, Yeah, it will not get in there. I don't know if I have to put something in that folder. Let me try to drag something in that folder. It's not even let me put... Well, that would be up... Oh, I'm sorry. That's up here. Because that's actually a copy of a playlist. That could be why. Yeah, because that's supposed to be a copy of that playlist is all that's supposed to be. So I think... Uh, let me see if I can do that with that. Uh, create subfolder. Hit OK under Latin House. That's really got me kind of confused there why that's not doing it. I'll have to look into that. Sorry about that. Are you asking to see, is there a way to see your bit rates? Yes, you can. There's a couple of different ways to see the bit rates. So if I go here, uh, you can right click on uh, Tag Editor. And in Tag Editor, uh, let me move this so everything's seeable here. Uh, in Tag Editor, it will show you the bit rate right here. Um, you can also, if I'm correct, add a column. This adds a column for bit rate. And it will show you the bit rates right here. As you see, I have some low bit rates in there. <laughs> um, I don't even know what a 3200 bit rate is. That can't even be anything. Oh, that's a video. So that's showing me frames per second. A combination of that. That's so weird. Anyways, but that's how you look at your, your bit rate. So if you want the 128s, you can do it that way. And you can even search for the 128s by, you know, in your thing. Um, I don't know if it's a hashtag uh, 128 bit. No. I don't know if it's considered hashtag 128. There is a search for bit rate that way because they have the little codes that you can do for searching specific things like that. Um, but you can just sort if you want, and there's there's a whole lot of 128s in there. That's terrible. Uh, but some of these, like I said, they could have been replaced. I don't know. That one there is a, 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 a remix version that I got somewhere. So I hope that helps, Reggie, get you all the things you need there. I apologize. I'm just not – I don't think I'm on um, I'm on, I'm on, on the ball tonight. we got lots of people watching. I appreciate everyone watching. Uh, if you have tuned in and you didn't see anything, remind you that on the 28th, we are having DJ Superfly come in to answer all your Serato questions. Next month, we have DJ Strobe coming in to do um, Tractor, and we are doing the software, the DJ DJ software that begins with an M. Um, DJ Res says 3200 equals Sonic Bliss. Yeah, it puts, it puts you in a dream state. Um and, and again, I, I honestly could not tell you with virtual, and I wish, I, I, I probably should ask someone, that when you do see the bit rates in there, I don't know if virtual is reading the actual bit rate of the song or the bit rate that is written into the tags. So you can fake a bit rate writing it into the tags with a program, and I don't know if this is reading the actual bit rate of the song or reading what someone has written into it, you know, because someone can fake it. So that I don't know. Um, I hope you're not playing any songs lower than 128, Reg. I mean, I again, I have songs that are lower, but I would, I would not recommend that in any way, shape, or form. <clears throat> so we still have about 20 minutes. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, throw them at me. I'm going to go back to the question board here. Um, uh, this is another one. Kenny, uh, this was Kenny Zale. He asked one earlier. Uh, he said, on Virtual DJ, say where to lock in or set the volume on samples. Um, each sample you can change to whatever you want it to be. So we're going to go here, left screen, and we're going to go to the sampler. And it may take me a minute to figure this out, but we have the sampler over here, and then the folders over here, and in the, in the lists, you're going to have sampler right there. So I'm going to click on sampler, and then it's going to show me all my samplers that are here, okay, in this left list over here. So, and then these are all the samples that are there. And on each one of those samples, so this first one is kick half, 
So if I go down to, as you can see, it's MJ samples and tags there. So I go down to MJ samples and tags, click on it and kick half. I go over here and hit the, um, uh, what do you call it there, the gear. And here is where that you can adjust certain things uh, uh, to, to uh, do different things to it. And that includes uh, the BPM and right there in that little tiny spot right there is your gain knob that you can bracket the gain off. So you within this can change the BPM of the samples. You can change uh, how they are pitched. So if you want a sample that's pitched higher or lower, you can do it there. You can have it sync if you have like a loop or a kick, like this is a kick. I can have it synced uh, uh, to whatever it's doing and that's what this kick is doing. Its purpose is to whatever's playing, it will sync to that song. So it'll go kick kick on beat of whatever it is but you can change it uh the gain on individual ones uh, of these that way and you can name them here you can group them you can colorize them whatever you want to do and each and every single one of your samples has the ability to adjust those um and that was again that kenny asked that question i thought that was a great question covering all that but again this is all over here under lists and advice you have playlists and all these different things and then under uh, uh, samplers, all your different samples. See, I have video stuff in there uh, and all kinds. These are all different sample decks I have. There's drum machines in there, uh, video effects, all kinds of stuff. And that's all under just sampler over here. And that's all in this section here. And you can adjust those um, right from there. So back to the chat room. Uh, State of Zen asks, question, what is your favorite country song? Whichever one just finished playing. There's only one kind of music worse than country music, and that's loud country music, because you can hear it more. So uh, we still have about 15 minutes. If you guys have any questions here, uh, Rez says, fake it till you make it. All my songs are identified as 320 KB. Good for you. Um, but it's an interesting thing, because I'm going to go back here and show you this. One of the things that you can add to virtual is, is a My Library plugin, and that's what this is right here. And you can download it. So if I go here and go down to Extensions and type in My Library... Um, it would be under other and tools. I think it's tools or database. Yeah, database filters. So it's others, tools, I mean, others and database filters. And it's my library. And as you can see, it's telling me that this needs to be updated. So I'm going to update it. And that quick was updated. But what it does is it puts in a filter folder, a list of filter folders that, um, let me move me here so you guys can see this. A list of filter folders that have identifying things to them so you can look at uh, all the albums li stuff listed by albums in alphabetical uh, artists alphabetical but one of the things it has in under extras is it extras or is it tools where is it at here database and then tools and here you can look at stuff that has uh, the file is missing uh, it has not been scanned by the system uh, it's songs that don't have an artist don't have a title, uh, no BPM, uh, and you can look at low bit rate, and it will identify ones that are all considered low bit rate in here. And you can just look at this and pull them out, get new ones, and you can do the auto bit rate. So this will show you everything in there, the bit rates you have. So apparently I have one that has two bit rate. Oh, this is the Gummy Bear song. So this, this again, is probably reading something different. This was, I think this was downloaded from YouTube because I wanted the video version, but it's saying it's, it's at, it's at two bit rate. Um, but you can through, through the, my library thing, find that. And then you can look at all your different bit rates that you have in there and it will group all the songs you have by those bit rates. And I'm going to try to keep scrolling until I get to the bottom. See, there's, there's when you get into some of the, I think it reads the videos differently because these are all video. I guarantee these are all videos. Um, keep scrolling, keep, there we go, it's the end. So if I clicked on this, that is a, uh, oh, that's that's a video. There's videos. Yeah, that's video, video. So if we go back up there and we get some of those, let me jump back up to the 300s, and you're going to get more realistic stuff up in here. So, But that's a kind of neat tool that I've, I've always kind of liked. And it can you can just sort stuff through that. It helps you clean stuff up. It's an easy way to find stuff. Um, there is a tool in here for duplicates. Um, it is under. Um, there's one here for um, duplicates. I can't remember where it's at. Um, is it under extras? 
If you searched around, there's one in there for duplicates, and I can't remember what it's under. I thought it was under tools. Um, and you can even do a search uh, by this by file type. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with that My Library plugin. I think it's really good. I love it. Um, um, keep going down there. Randy Bosley, thank you for tuning in. I'm setting up a new computer. If I get another subscription to Virtual DJ, can I share my, my playlist between Virtual DJ between V8 subscriptions? Uh, I hope you're not using V8. Let's, let's start there. Um, V8's like four versions ago. Um, I hope you're grabbing at least 2020, which gives you the chance of the 64-bit or the 32-bit. But if you do 2021, that's a 64-bit only program. Um, but you should be able to copy them uh, with your other computer, copy your songs over. that They have to be in the exact same drive. So if it's like C, you know, D drive, uh, 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 user, uh, your name, DJ music, in the other computer, that file has, you know, your music has to be there. And your your files that you're moving over come under the user under um, documents, and you have to put it in the same place. And that's all that'll cover all your playlists as long as those two files go over to the next computer in the same spots. It will read everything exactly the same. I hope that helped. Um, did you hear about an upgrade to Denon DJ Prime Four? Um, greetings from Holland. Welcome. I love the fact that we get people from all over the world tuning in. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I've not heard anything about Den Denon stuff. Uh, you know, Ken, we're about one month off of the DJ Expo, so whatever's coming out, they're holding it close close to 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 vest. Um, because I've not gotten any kind of insight information on any of the uh, hardware companies and stuff they're releasing at this point. So usually a month out, we're getting at least teasers or ideas or someone's going, "Hey, I heard about this. Is this true?" I've not heard any rumors about anything right now. And that's what's going to be kind of interesting. You know, us missing an entire year of the Expo. Uh, well, the Expo and uh, uh, NAM, which, you know, is, is another big place where some of them are, are released. So we missed two of those, three totally, I think. And uh, uh, so it's going to be interesting what they're going to do with the first live show like this in quite a while. So uh, unfortunately, at this time, I do not plan on going to the Expo. I'm going to be covering it from home. I'm probably going to be doing a sh at least one show that week talking about stuff, if not a couple. I know a lot of the people who watch me are probably going to be there and not tune in. But for those of you like me who aren't going, I'll try to be your inside thing. Uh, Dan Carpenter is going, and I'm going to try to get him to get some raw video of stuff and send it to me if there's any new stuff so I can just get, get you guys good video or at least have him film it. And I'll put it up with you know as him being the reporter. But we'll definitely get all the information up there that we can. Um, still got a couple minutes. If you guys have any questions, shout it out. I do thank you all for tuning in. <clears throat> if you've missed any of this, it is on demand, so you can go back and watch it afterwards. And uh, this is the summer of software. So I encourage you. Uh, I know some of you guys are finally getting back to work. <clears throat> uh, it's going to it's seem like you're not going to be able to do anything besides work because I know some of you have got very busy schedules. Uh, but don't forget to take time to, you know, work on your library. Clean it up, you know, tag stuff, rename it. Put it in crates if you use crates, uh, folders. You know whatever you do, take take a little time and 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 this summer, take a breath while you're watching TV and, and drag some folders around and move it and don't just let it build up all summer. Uh, you'll thank me when you do want to get into something. Um, <clears throat> that's at least what I think. I know I have a big big thing to work on. I have two different gigs coming up the next two weekends that are kind of unique and I'm kind of redoing a lot of uh, stuff for them because they are. Um, very unique in the in what I have to play, so I kind of have to work on those. So I'll be spending some time doing those myself, along with everything else. The book is still in motion. I finally settled on a uh, um, copy editor for the book, so that's in motion and settled on. Uh, I think I settled on a book cover. Uh, my goal is to have it out before the holiday, you know, the Christmas holiday season, um, for sale. So keep an idea on. I'm working on all that, and then as that comes in, then I'll have to do websites and different things for that that whole world that is different than DJing so some of mine might be split some of them you guys might want to join me over there it's the book's about creativity so the other stuff that I'm going to be doing on there is going to be encouraging people in the creative world 
uh, whatever your thing is to do it, to encourage it, to find time if you have a busy life or a family, a day job, all these things that if you're a creative person and you love being creative to find how to put that back into your life because it's it, creativity and spending the time on stuff like that is healing in so many different ways. And that's what the book's kind of about, my journey through all the years of doing this because I've been doing this a long, long time. And that's all I want to say. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, DJ Matt asked, was Virtual DJ ever coming out with a standalone app for an iPad? Now, here's the thing. I had heard two years ago, or three, it might even have been three now, that Serato was working on a mobile version of their software, which it absolutely 100% makes sense that you would because this next generation of DJs all have tablets of some sort. Most of them, you know, don't even have laptops they start out with a tablet you know mom dad can i have a t an ipad whatever um so it would make sense that the software companies would be moving that direction to give a a tablet version that can work i've seen others obviously other softwares like algorithm and there was another one i saw the other day that someone had hooked up to uh the rain one a tablet hooked up to the rain one running software so he's controlling the 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 software via the the rain one and it was on a tablet um so all that stuff is doable and out there and like i said as these tablets get more powerful uh solid state drives get bigger and more affordable uh that's going to be what a lot of djs i think are going to go to they're going to go to a tablet maybe slap on a keyboard because i have where's it at um i had this out because i'm doing a bunch of updates so i have um uh, the Surface Go, which this is like a cheap version of that, but it is a full Windows computer. So if they end up doing something like that, I can pop that off of there and DJ like that with that. Well, technically I, I can do it with this, but if they do the mobile thing, it makes it easier. But if I'm out somewhere and I want a keyboard to do stuff on, I just slap the keyboard on like many of the tablets have now. And I have a very small, very light computer to DJ from. And that's what I think the future is going to go. That's what I saw years ago on this. But I don't. I have not heard anybody going in detail other than, like I said, three years ago, Serato was talking about doing the mobile one. Um, I'm guessing Virtual is too. I know they have their plug-in. If you've never tried it, it's kind of neat. Uh, is a, a remote app, an app that you can control Virtual DJ if you're on the same Wi-Fi system. I have used it before for fun. Um, but uh, it, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about an app for a thing. But I think they're going to do that. Uh, I, 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 w I honestly expected it way before this, mainly for the money reason, because you got to think about it. I paid for Virtual DJ a decade ago, and they've not gotten any money from me on that. Nothing, because that's the way they run that. But if they put out the app, they're going to put out the app as a monthly thing. So they're going to keep, if you choose to stay on, whether it be Serato, Virtual DJ, whatever, they have that app. They're not going to sell you the app at one price. They're going to make you pay a monthly thing. So they're going to have you hooked using that thing for as long as you want to be on that ecosystem every single month. And that's that's what I think is going to push it to where they can get it so that it is a, um, a profitable thing for them. And once they get that to where you're paying a subscription every month, um, th that's what's going to go. I actually heard today that in August next month that Windows is going to be releasing a cloud version of Windows. So you can be on something like a Mac, you can be on a Chromebook, and you can use Windows, a full version of Windows from the cloud on whatever you do. And it's going to be workable on computers, phones, tablets, everything. And that's the next step besides just having your, your information on the cloud. The programs you're going to be using are going to be on the cloud. So you're going to get any pro, any computer you have, even if it's an old one that does not work very well, you're going to be able to run Windows from the cloud on an older computer and that's the purpose of what they're doing so as these things go because we talk about uh there's already a uh, 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 i can't see cool c312 there is actually a version of uh, a i can't remember the name of it i actually got to beta test it with them but there is an online oh it's from um um oh the streaming service um give me a second here uh beat source beat source made their own online DJing program. So it's an online program that you can DJ from any browser. It's a Chrome-based browser. So Chrome-based browsers all come from the Chromium world, and that, that includes Canary, that includes the new uh, Microsoft Edge, any of those that are built on the Chrome background of that that uh, uh, that shareware Chrome that it's all built on, the understructure, um, you can um, 
DJ from their database of songs on their online program, and it all works like that. Um, Jimmy Spin asked, why would you want to? That's a question that an older person would ask Jimmy because the next generation wants to. Um, you can say what you want, but like I said years ago, people were like, um, uh, you know, no one, no one's ever gonna DJ from a a a, a CD, you know, and then nobody's ever gonna use a computer, and then no one's ever gonna use a controller. Well, it's just the next step, and it's going to keep going. Yeah, Matt, beat port. I didn't. I was I, when I said beat source, I wasn't sure. It's was one of the beats source or port, but they have that out there, and you can test it and use it if you want. But I'm like I said, Jimmy, you're saying yuck because of Windows. I'm. I would not be surprised if this year, if Apple or next year, Apple does the exact same thing that gives you an a chance to run a a a, a lighter version of uh, uh, iOS mobily. Because what if someone has a Chromebook and they hate Chrome book? I have a Chromebook and I hate Chrome. Um, the the Chrome operating system. It just it's it works perfectly for what it is. It's not universal all the way around. But um, it, if you were a Mac fan and you said you wanted you you had that, it worked. Uh, and you could run OS, a version of OS on it uh, via the cloud, uh, you'd at least have that computer to use somewhere in your house if you want to. So <sighs> crazy this world is, is happening so fast. Again, on the 28th of this month, um, uh, we're going to have DJ Superfly coming in talking about Serato, ans answering all your Serato questions. Um, so please join again back. I'm, I'm only doing two a month because I want to enjoy this summer. I've been getting out, doing a lot of things, enjoying it, doing a lot of hiking. I was out hiking yesterday. Um, have a whole lot of other plans. I'm just trying to enjoy this summer. Um, uh, I'm just mentally in a good spot after 2020. I know everyone else hated 2020, but um, it, it helped me clarify some things. And I think that's part of the reason why I'm not going to the expo this year is because I just don't feel I need to. Um, nothing against the expo. I just I think I want to take a year off. That's all. Um, but keep in mind also with the DJ and TV crew, they are doing a chill out with a whole bunch of people doing it. it's fun. We're at a whole new venue this year, so you make sure you check that out. Um, <clears throat> you can check the DJ and TV Insiders Facebook page, and all the information is there. Uh, follow that. Um, also, uh, someone throw into the chat the chill room. We have had a chill room started since. Uh, the beginning of all of this, it's, I think, believe it's DJNTV forward slash chill. And it is an online Zoom that's open to people, us DJs, that we can go in and just hang out and talk and do different things like that. It's not where people go and spin. You just talk. And I am going in tonight after the show, so I'll be going directly from here. Actually, if I run upstairs, grab some water. I'm going to go into the chill room. So if you have more questions that I did not answer tonight, you can join me over there and DJNTV.com forward slash chill. And we can just talk about whatever. So... Thank you all for everything that you've done here. You guys are freaking awesome. Thank you for hanging out with me and listening to me ramble, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you have other questions that I didn't answer, either hold them off until we do another virtual DJ or send them to me and I can add them to the list and we can answer them later. Or if it's something like that, I'll try to help you with. Um, but that's about it. Uh, keep in mind, I still do my DJ classes. If you guys are interested, I'm hoping in August to do the group class, to try out the group class. So we already have some people that want to do the group class, and I'm going to give it to them as free to test to see if we can do an online group class. I don't even know if it's possible, but I'm going to give it a try. So uh, Matt's, Matt says he's been joined my Wheelie Wednesday pictures. Thank you. Um, the one I posted uh, today was from uh, last summer in a field, and I put my camera on a tripod for that picture and did my wheelie up through the field, came back down to get my camera and didn't realize there was uh, ground bees there. And as I'm picking my camera up, I'm getting bit by the, you know, stung by the ground bees and I'm, I am running through the field in my boots and everything. It was hilarious, but yeah. So, oh, thank you, Randy. Appreciate that. Again, uh, I, I always say as of now, because I honestly probably about five times in my life said, Oh, I'm not going to expo this year. And then like two days before uh, I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm going. Anybody got a room I can stay at a floor I can sleep on, you know, and stuff like that. So at its point right now, I do have a ride. I can either drive myself or someone else I know is going, and I can ride with them. I already have two rooms that people said, yeah, you can just crash with us. So if I decide to go, I can. But I just, traveling for me and all that stuff is stressful, and I think I want to just enjoy this summer. You know, I've, I just kind of I, I kind of don't want to screw with this. I'm in a good spot, and I just don't want to screw with it. That's the best I can say. And I hope that you guys find something like that this year, too, that can help you find a good piece where you're not stressful in the job that we do as a DJ that you can both enjoy it. And if you do a day job and DJing, that can be overwhelming and be able to spend time with your family or loved ones or anything like that, hobbies you have. Um, take some time. That's my encouragement for the end of the show is take some time for life because you don't know when your time is up and you could be here a zillion years or, or not. And just 
today is all you're promised, you know, and, and just do with it the best you can. And that's why I'm here with you guys today and enjoy it. And again, if you want to join me here in just a little bit over on the DJ and TV chill, it's djntv.com forward slash chill. And we can ask questions, Rob, and put it in the YouTube uh, chat. If you're on one of the Facebooks or something, you can't see that. So all you have to do is type in djntv.com forward slash chill. So until next time, take care of yourselves.